Hello and welcome to today's Bible reading. We're continuing through Numbers. We're nearly done. We're getting there, but it's a quite an interesting uh, episode now happening in the book of Numbers. And we'll also be reading Psalm 63 in a moment. So let's pray. Father, I thank you that we have the privilege of meeting with you through your word. Now I pray, may we feel your presence and may your presence help us to have illumination into your word now. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Numbers chapter 23. And Balaam said to Balak, Build for me here seven altars, and, and prepare for me here seven bulls and seven rams. Balak did as Balaam had said. And Balak and Balaam offered on each altar a bull and a ram. And Balaam said to Balak, Stand beside your burnt offering, and I will go. Perhaps the Lord will come to meet me, and whatever he shows me, I will tell you. And he went to a bare height, and God met Balaam. And Balaam said to him, I have arranged the seven altars, and I have offered on each altar a bull and a ram. And the Lord put a word in Balaam's mouth and said, Return to Balak, and thus you shall speak. And he returned to him. And behold, he and all the princes of Moab were standing beside his burnt offering. And Balaam took up his discourse and said, From Aram, Balak has brought me, the king of Moab, from the eastern mountains. Come. Curse Jacob for me, and come, denounce Israel. How can I curse whom God has not cursed? How can I denounce whom the Lord has not denounced? For from the top of the crags I see him, from the hills I behold him. Behold a people dwelling alone and not counting itself among the nations. Who can count the dust of Jacob or number the fourth part of Israel? Let me die the death of the upright, and let my end be like his. And Balak said to Balaam, What have you done to me? I took you to curse my enemies, and behold, you have done nothing but bless them. And he answered and said, Must I not care to speak what the Lord puts in my mouth? And Balak said to him, Please come with me to another place from which you may see them. You shall see only a fraction of them, and shall not see them all. Then curse them for me from there. And he took him to the field of Zophim, to the top of Pisgah, and built seven altars and offered a bull and a ram on each altar. Balaam said to Balak, Stand here beside your burnt offering while I meet with the Lord over there. And the Lord met Balaam and put a word in his mouth and said, Return to Balak, and thus you shall speak. And he came to him, and behold, he was standing beside his burnt offering, and the princes of Moab with him. And Balak said to him, what has the Lord spoken? And Balaam took up his discourse and said, Rise, Balak, and hear. Give ear to me, O son of Zippor. God is not a man that he should lie, or a son of man that he should change his mind. Has he said, and will he not do it? Or has he spoken, and he will not fulfill it? Behold, I received a command to bless. He has blessed, and I cannot revoke it. He has not beheld misfortune in Jacob, nor has he seen trouble in Israel. The Lord, their God, is with them, and the shout of a king is among them. God brings them out of Egypt, and is for them like the horns of a wild ox. For there is no enchantment against Jacob, no divination against Israel. Now shall it be said of Jacob and Israel, What has God wrought? Behold, a people... As a lioness, it rises up, and as a lion, it lifts itself. It does not lie down until it has devoured the prey and drunk the blood of the slain. And Balak said to Balaam, Do not curse them at all, and do not bless them at all. But Balaam answered Balak, Did I not tell you all that the Lord says that I must do? And Balak said to Balaam, Come now, and I will take you to another place. Perhaps it will please God that you may curse them for me from there. So Balak took Balaam to the top of Peor, which overlooks the desert. And Balaam said to Balak, Build for me here seven altars, and prepare for me here seven bulls and seven rams. And Balak did as Balaam had said, and offered a bull and a ram on each altar. Uh, before we go into chapter 24, which is a, a, a seriously uh, interesting prophecy about the destiny of Israel, we see here how paganism worked before the Old Covenant. We see that the idea was that you could control the gods. You could control the territorial god. 
which is why it, it appears that Balak is taking Balaam, the prophet, we'll call him a prophet or diviner, to these various places. The idea was that, well, there's a God over this mountain, there's a God over this mountain, we'll take you to a different mountain, maybe that God will come to the party. That's how paganism works. It, it's the idea of a, a special holy place. Uh, but that's not, that's not how God works. So just an interesting thought there. It's a, the difference between biblical Christianity and paganism is who's in control. When we pray as believers, as Christians, we're not praying to control God. We're praying to worship and so that we see how paganism works. It's the idea that you can control God. All right, chapter 24. When Balaam saw that it pleased the Lord to bless Israel, he did not go, as at other times, to look for omens, but set his face toward the wilderness. And Balaam lifted up his eyes and saw Israel camping tribe by tribe, and the Spirit of God came upon him. And he took up his discourse and said, The oracle of Balaam the son of Beor, the oracle of the man whose eyes opened, the oracle of him who hears the words of God, who sees the vision of the Almighty, falling down with his eyes uncovered. How lovely are your tents, O Jacob, your intimates, O Israel, like palm groves that stretch afar, like gardens beside a river, like aloes that the Lord has planted, like cedar trees beside the waters. Water shall flow from his buckets, and his seed shall be in many waters. His king shall be higher than Agag, and his kingdom shall be exalted. God brings him out of Egypt and is for him like the horns of the wild ox. He shall eat up the nations, his adversaries, and shall break their bones in pieces and pierce them through with his arrows. He crouched, he lay down like a lion, and like a lioness, who will rouse him up? Blessed are those who bless you, and cursed are those who curse you. And Balak's anger was kindled against Balaam, and he struck his hands together. And Balak said to Balaam, I called you to curse my enemies, and behold, you have blessed them these three times. Therefore now flee to your own place. I said, I will certainly honor you, but the Lord has held you back from honor. And Balaam said to Balak, Did I not tell your messengers whom you sent to me? If Balak should give me his house full of silver and gold, I would not be able to go beyond the word of the Lord to do either good or bad of my own will. What the Lord speaks, that will I speak. And now behold, I am going to my people. Come, I will let you know what this people will do to your people in the latter days. And he took up his discourse and said, the oracle of Balaam, the son of Beor, the oracle of the man whose eye is opened, the oracle of him who hears the words of God and knows the knowledge of the Most High, who sees the vision of the Almighty falling down with his eyes uncovered. I see him, but not now. I behold him, but not near. A star shall come out of Jacob, and a scepter shall rise out of Israel. It shall crush the forehead of Moab, and break down all the sons of Sheth. Edom shall be dispossessed, Seir also. His enemies shall be dispossessed. Israel is doing valiantly. And one from Jacob shall exercise dominion and destroy the survivors of cities. Then he looked on Amalek and took up his discourse and said, Amalek was the first among the nations, but its end is utter destruction. And he looked on the Kenite, and took up his discourse and said, Enduring is your dwelling place, and your nest is set in the rock. Nevertheless, Cain shall be burned when Asher takes you away captive. And he took up his discourse and said, Alas, who shall live when God does this? But ships shall come from Kittim, and they shall afflict Asher and Eber, and he too shall come to utter destruction. Then Balaam rose and went back to his place. And Balak also went his way. Well, we will soon see that both Balak and Balaam will suffer um, as a result of Israel's conquest. We'll see that soon. Let's go now into Psalms, and we are looking at Psalm 63. A Psalm of David when he was in the wilderness of Judah. 
O God, you are my God, earnestly I seek you. My soul thirsts for you, my flesh faints for you, as in a dry and weary land where there is no water. So I have looked upon you in the sanctuary, beholding your power and glory. Because your steadfast love is better than life, my lips will praise you. So I will bless you as long as I live. In your name I will lift up my hands. My soul will be satisfied as with fat and rich food, and my mouth will praise you with joyful lips. When I remember you upon my bed and meditate on you in the watches of the night, for you have been my help, and in the shadow of your wings I will sing for joy. My soul clings to you, your right hand upholds me, but those who seek to destroy my life shall go down into the depths of the earth. They shall be given over to the power of the sword, they shall be a portion for jackals, but the king shall rejoice in God. All who swear by him shall exult, for the mouths of liars will be stopped. Well, this is interesting too in that chances are David was a part of the fulfillment of Balaam's prophecy by conquering those surrounding nations. And here he, he talks about conquering him in this psalm. And again, it's a, it's a psalm of trust. David trusted God. And I'm going to pray, and I hope you join me in prayer, that we can do that as well. We can trust God despite our circumstances. For David, he wasn't yet who God had called him to be. He was in the wilderness of Judah, and he was being pursued by Saul. So uh, let's pray. Father, I pray that we will be mindful that you are for us, not against us. Even while all this was going on with Balak and Balaam, Israel was unaware of it. There were people trying to harm them and curse them, and yet you were blessing and protecting them. And Lord, I pray that your people today, those who are joining with me in this Bible reading, will particularly know your blessing and your protection. That, Father, what they fear will not come upon them, but their trust will be in you. And I pray, Lord, that we will give you praise, just as David gave you praise, even as he was being pursued and had not yet walked into his destiny. So, Father, I pray that you might be blessed and glorified through our lives today. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you again for watching this. If you're appreciating it, leave a comment, some reflection yourself in the comments, and I'll try to respond to those. If you haven't liked this, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. I'd really appreciate that too. Bless you, and I'll see you tomorrow for our next Daily Bible reading.